If you have been dabbling in the high performance PC builds world, you know what a Fantax T30 is and you know what Fantax has created. Back when they launched the T30, they pretty much gave the start shot to the race. Everybody and everybody's mom started to come out with their version of a high performance 3000 or even more RPM fan. Not everybody succeeded and I could count those who did on a single hand, but the truth is not everybody needs a high performance fan and Fantex knows that, which is exactly why they recently introduced their M25 line of fans. I'm not gonna lie, they are not T30s, of course not, they are way slower, but for that they cost like half as much. And these here are actually 140s. Meet the Fantex M25 in 140, the 1800 RPM quick, 2.8mm of H2O strong, which can blast a staggering 104.6 CFM into your case. But before we take a closer look at them, let's first focus on the benchmarks. First up is our case almost heatsink benchmark. For this we strap three of these bad boys into our Fantex P500A, two in the front and one in the back without using a fan on the cooler in order to inflate the numbers. Whilst letting all of the M25 spin at their max 1800 RPM, they manage to keep the CPU at 39.2 degrees C above ambient. Now at first when I got these results, I really wasn't paying that much attention. It seemed right, everything made sense sense considering the 104 CFM. But wait, they beat the Nokia NFA14. These are the first 140mm fans that beat the A14 in our case benchmark. Of course, ignoring these suckers, they, they just don't count. Spinning fast enough to make my benchmark machine move it disqualifies you. No, the max performance of these beat the A14, that's, that's wow. But what about the Noise 2 performance? Ah, uh, uh, okay, not, not, not quite, but close. Considering that they are the ones pushing the temps to the lowest point, it's really okay that they are also the loudest, but once you make them spin slower, the noise to performance ratio is not quite a NFA14. Sure, it's close, but it's more like a silent wing 4 140mm high speed. But still, on the spectrum of fans, this is a very good result. Especially considering the price difference between a M25 and anything that has the name Nokia on it. But what about radiator performance? Because who knows, maybe these here are really to be used for water cooling. For our radiator specific benchmarks, we use the Octopus, a machine equipped with an 4.8 GHz all-core 185 watt strong 9900K in combination with multiple radiators with a variety of thicknesses and FPIs. From there we measure the water temperature after it exits the radiator and subtract the ambient air temperature giving us the temperature of the water above ambient. After starting the fan at 100% of its max speed, we reduce the fan speed in 10% decrements and measure the noise omitted by the fan on top of a radiator from a 1 meter distance giving us a nice noise to performance curve to which we will get later on. But benchmarking a single fan on a single radiator takes upwards of 3 hours so we have to limit ourselves to the benchmarks that we have already been doing the last few weeks and yeah to the ones that we have available. It's we still need more time. For the M25, we'll focus on the 60mm thick 10 FPI radiator only. Holy damn! At 9 degrees C, a Fantex M25 140mm was capable of keeping it significantly colder than a Noctua A14 or Cooler Master Mobius 140p. But the real beauty starts to show on the Noise 2 performance graph. At the lower RPMs, the Cooler Master was capable of keeping it slightly quieter, but once we broke through that 40 dB mark, the M25 just took off, keeping it always a bit quieter, and above 44 dB, it was the only fan still keeping up and pushing the water temperature down while the other ones were just watching. To quote Fantex themselves, the M25 is built upon the award-winning T30 to keep the next-gen hardware cool with an airflow cooling performance. And I can definitely see some similarities. Now, it's not a 30mm stick fan, it's really not, but they did move a few things over, like for example the parts of the frame, you have a few things like these 
reinforcements or the rubber corners which are very very close to what we have seen on the T30. The fan wing design is kinda similar but not identical. Here we have 9 heavily bent wings, not quite as aggressively bent as on the T30 but it's going into the same direction. And another thing they moved over is the cabling. Similar to the T30, we got a very short PVM cable with a splitter attached at the end to make it easier to daisy chain multiple fans together without creating a whole cluster of fans, especially on top of radiators. And the unfunny thing about this is, on the RGB side, not only did Fantex use the proprietary DRGB connector, which, yeah, okay, you can immediately adapt them using the included adapter, but you're going to be left with a hell lot of cable mess. But why are they cleaning up one type of cable while it's allowing the other one to be an annoying pain in my ass? On a brighter note, RGB. It, it has RGB, you may like it or not, but it's bright. You won't see any LEDs themselves that easily. It's okay. There is nothing revolutionary about the implementation on these, but it will do the job if you're into that sort of thing. So where do we stand? Those are good fans. They, they truly are. They do the job as a case fan. Actually, they do it relatively well. Uh, not the best, but amongst them. But where they really shine is as radiator high performance monsters. Sure, in the mid fan speeds, the Mobius 140Ps are slightly better, but if you really need the air, the M25s are definitely the better choice. Sure, the cabling is an issue, but it is quickly solvable with the stuff included inside the same box, so I can look over that. They are definitely not T30s, but I can see them as the the T30's little sister. Not quite as good, but also not as expensive. As a small fun fact, those are almost the exact same fans used in the G500A, and the ones that are in there are limited to 1400 RPM, but that's plenty for a case fan. So uh, it seems like they did a good, good choice there. But okay, this should be all for Fantex and their newest M25 in 140mm. At this point, a huge thank you to Fantex for sending him over. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to buy a ruler. Not for me, but for Fantex, because obviously, some, some, somebody needs one. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Lee & Lee Uni P28 fans. They come with zero RGB, but a lot of performance. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.